Hey everybody, welcome back to our video fly tying series. I'm Steve Worley, owner of the Worley Bugger Fly Company, and today it is March 9th, 2023, and we're waiting for our big squall hatch to happen here on the Yakima River. I want to show you uh, one of my favorite stonefly nymph patterns, and I tied this in the squala version. Uh, this is the, uh, the Bayat stonefly nymph. It was originated by Mike Mercer um, from the fly shop in California uh, over a couple decades ago, and it's really, really good fly. Uh, caught thousands and thousands of trout throughout the world. Um, I've just put a little, couple little tweaks on. Of course, I'm going to tie it on a jig nymph here, and uh, I'm tying it in the squala colors. You can tie this fly in a variety of sizes and colors to match any stonefly hatch that uh, that you might encounter on your river. Um, but since we're kind of anticipating our big squala hatch here on the Yakima, I decided to do it in squala colors. So stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to tie Mercer's by its stonefly jig style. Okay, so let's get started tying Mercer's by at stone on a jig. So you're gonna load your jig hook with a slotted tungsten bead, put it in your vise. And uh, I'm using the Eric's FW550 mini jig. It's uh, got a big wide bend on it and it's super sharp. You gotta really watch your thread on it. Slide your bead back there and start right behind the eye and mount your thread to the iron. You're going to take a turkey coil wild, of course, because it's got the varig variegation in it. And one side's going to have the smaller strips. The biots. The other side's going to have the longer biots for the body. So, first thing you're going to do is cut off four of those. You're going to need two for the antenna, two for the tails. And you can see with these, they're concave so you want the concave cave side out so lay that up against the side of the shank there get your measurement of how long you want the antenna to be and make a few thread wraps the weight of the bobbin will hold it in place there and then same thing with the opposite side Make sure your antennas are fairly even. And then just wind these down. And I just wind them right into the body. And then we'll just build a little thread base here. And then you just have to half hitch, chop your thread, and then you can slide your, you can't get too carried away with your thread getting too thick because you're going to have to slide your, your bead over that and slide it back up to the eye where it's in place. Now you have your antenna belt. You can remount your thread. And... Then you can build a thread base on your body. And since this jig hook has such a wide gap on it, you want to go you want to go past the band quite a bit, maybe about a quarter of the turn, because it's going to be riding up when you're fishing it. So. You want to grab a little bit of dubbing just so you can get these, get your tails splayed. 
and this Wopsy Prism dubbing is just awesome to work with. It's really become one of my favorite dubbings. So you're just going to take and just make a little dubbing ball there. Doesn't have to be a whole lot, just enough where you're going to get some separation. And again, concave side facing inward towards the hook. And just make a couple of wraps. Grab your other side. Check your coordinates there, make sure they're both are even, and then same thing here, you can just wind these right into the body. So this kind of helps with uh, forming the taper of the, of the, of the stonefly nymph, which is kind of one of the key things that, you know, the bioth stone always tried to instill was just the, the taper of the natural stonefly rather than just, you know, fishing a turd, you know, like a uh, pat stone, wherever pat is. We call it a girdle bug here, but it's, you know, it's referred to as a turd because it looks like a turd. Doesn't really have a taper to the body at all, so. Once you got that all tied in, work your thread all the way to the very back there and stop. It's probably good to lay a half hitch in and then set your set that thread aside. So you're, now you're going to grab your other bobbin with your Vivas 140 power thread and you're going to go about three quarters of the way up the shank and we're going to start building the front taper of the stonefly nymph. We just want it to be bigger so it gives off that natural taper of the stonefly so just work your thread back and forth here and this power thread's really thick so doesn't take a whole lot of turns just a couple of seconds and you'll build you can see how it's starting to form that taper to the body and once you got a pretty good segment there in the middle You can half hitch. And just chop it off and set that aside. You won't need it anymore. So it should look like this. So now you got the natural taper going here. So now you got your UTC 70. You can bring that back in line. And what you're going to want to do with these with these turkey bites, you know, well before you start tying, like maybe even the day before, is take and cut out a bunch and soak them in water. And it'll really, really make the job a lot easier than just cutting them off of the off the turkey quill and trying to wind them in. You can, but they're they, they tend to be you know a little bit more brittle. If if they soak in water, they really become pliable, and you have less chances of breaking them. I mean, you can still break them, but not as easily. So once they're wet, they're really a lot nicer to work with. So then you can see how they're tapered too. So that's what's going to give us our segmented look on our fly. So we're going to take, I'm going to lay that small, the small tapered end in first along the side there. 
grab that with your thread and then just tie that in and sometimes you can get away using one quill depending on the size of the biot stone that you're tying since this is a bigger it's a size four, but actually, I mean, you know, when we're fishing it, I mean, it's gonna be more squala size. It's just that the hook is, has such a wide gape on it that it makes it look maybe bigger in the vise than what it actually is. So work your thread up about halfway to your thorax there, and you're gonna want a really good hackle plier and attach it and then you're going to want to counterwind these so again got to really watch this these points because they're super sharp they'll take that biot right out so make a turn and then just one right in front of another and you'll see your segmented body start to form there and you're gonna get up maybe right to the end of the or the beginning of the thorax there then you can back your thread off And then just tie that biot down. Bind it down real good. Just capture it. And then you can chop it. So now we're gonna half hitch this real quick. Bring our thread up so it's close to our work and we're gonna grab another soaking biot okay but this time instead of tying in the small end we're going to tie in the larger end and tie that in right where you stopped with the first biot and work your thread forward and again Attach it to your hackle plier and then we're going to work it counterclockwise forward and it'll cover up that thorax. I'm going to tie in one more here. Be so we got that white thread covered up good. And just tie it off. Okay, so now we've built the body portion of our fly. Since this is a jig, we're going to take it out. And we're going to put it back in our vise. Get it in position that you want it in. And right now, since we have all of the biot and the body all exposed, we're going to take our UV glue here. We're going to butter it up, like my buddy Larry says. Real good. And this is going to 
This is going to add a lot of durability to uh, the, the turkey biot now. being tungsten it's going to be down bouncing in the in the rocks so butter that up real good and then blast it with your with your light and that's really gonna really gonna help really brings out those segments too in the in the biots Looks killer. Okay, so we're gonna take our prism dubbing. We're just gonna add just a little bit just for a foundation here. We start putting in our wing pads. So you're just gonna make a few wraps here. Should just just a little ball. So you're gonna take your thin skin, and I got brown, you're gonna cut it about a quarter of an inch, okay? And then you're gonna to wanna to go towards the end, and then you're gonna to wanna to cut the V shape out of it. So it looks like our first wing pad on our stonefly nymph. So you're going to want to lay that in there. Get it positioned where you want it. Don't want it covering up the whole, the whole body. Just, just enough where it's over the, kind of over the top of that big portion of the thorax is all. Make sure it's straight, pull it tight. And thin skin's really pretty nice stuff to work with, pretty easy. So you get that in place there. And you can chop that out. So there's your first wing pad. Back in the day when Mike Mercer first tied this, he was using epoxy. It was called the epoxy back by a stonefly nymph, but UV glue has changed all that for us now. And you know, we don't have to uh, use two-part epoxy anymore to get the same effect that we get from UV glue in just a matter of seconds. So you're gonna take and reattach your piece of thin skin here. Just bind that down in there and wind your thread back. to the base of the wing pad. And you'll stop. Okay, so your next step, you're gonna to wanna to choose a hand feather. And you're gonna to wanna to strip the stem. You wanna kinda of comb the Pull the feathers back here like this. And again, it's kind of concaved. You can see that it's it's swooping up. So you want this, the end of the tips facing forward. You're gonna lay that in. Get it as straight as you can up on top. for the gills and some of the legs. Bind that down real good. Usually I like to go in front and back and then you can cut that little 
extra piece out of there. And then just work your thread back. To the base and next we're going to add our rubber legs in so we're going to take and we're going to fold them in two and i'm just going to take them and lay them right up here on top and i want to make sure that my thread is all the way in the back there and then just make just make two really light wraps and then you can just stick your scissor right in that loop and just cut it. And then you can just pull your legs over to the side and get them in place where you want them. The weight of the bobbin should keep everything intact and in place while you're doing this. And then once you have them where you want, just wind them in tightly. Try to keep the legs from really getting too close to that head. You really want to keep some space up there. Once you got those tied in, just work your thread back. Again, to the base. And now we're going to take our dubbing again. Now we're going to build our thorax up here. I'm going to fill all this front in. It takes a little bit of dubbing to do this. We want this to be the largest portion of the fly. Again, so we're getting that nice taper. The stone fly. Sometimes that matters. So once you got your dubbing in place here, I just pull, make sure everything is where you want it. And we can just start filling this in. Kind of back and forth. And you should just stop right back behind the bead. And you should have a, it doesn't look like there's some space in there, but there's actually some space in that, in it back behind the bead where you can finish off the, the rest of the fly. So now we're gonna take our hen feather and we're gonna pull it forward real careful. Kind of comb the Comb those feathers back. And then just pull tight and that'll, it'll, you can see how it just sucked it right down into the back behind that bead. And then you can just pull on that stem and Get right down in there with your scissor and right on the base of that and then just cut that excess out. Now you can just kind of split it up on the top so you got half going to one side, half going to the other. And this is where our thin skin comes into play. So we just take that and 
pull that right over the top. Make some wraps and get that tied in real good. Try not to get your rubber legs in there. If you got a few of those feathers kind of going crazy on you, you can just chop them out. That should look like that so far. So now at this step, we're going to take more of our UV glue we're gonna coat the thorax and the that first wing case that we put in I like the medium for doing doing work like this rather than the thin. And you can use the thin, you just usually have to make a few coats on it, so take and blast it with your light. Dry. <clears throat> okay, so now this this piece should be you know it's ni nice to have it a little bit longer you know just so you can work with it a little bit easier so you're going to want to chop it off you're going to want to save some because this is going to be your second wing case on the top so just chop off the excess there And we're just going to take our scissors and go in. We need a sharp pair of scissors to cut this. Cut that V in there. So you get that. Realistic look with the stone fly. Got a little feather sticking in the eye there. We'll clean that out. You can see how it's formed the second wing case. So we'll take a little bit of our UV glue. And we'll just lay it right on the thorax plate there. And then I'll just take a bodkin. I'll just push that back in there. That UV light will penetrate through that thin skin and it'll glue it, giving you that second wing case look. And then we will take a little more, put it on that wing case that we just glued down. You can get some in there, get get it in behind that bead too where your thread is. You can build it up as heavy as you want, really. That's why it used to be called the epoxy. And then we'll just epoxy wing case. 
buy that stone farming here. So that's dry. Now we'll just take our thread and make a few half hitches here. Keep those rubber legs. And you can chop that off. Be careful not to hit your antenna. And then if you're lay your legs, of course, are probably going to need to be trimmed, so you can just kind of start slowly getting them to where you like the look of them. Pretty even. There we have it. Mercer's epoxy back by at Stonefly rubber legs with the jig tied with UV glue. Great uh, Stonefly nymph again tied in a variety of sizes and colors. This is the course the squala version but goldens yellow sally salmon flies summer stones whatever you like great great fly on uh, on any of our western rivers that have stonefly hatches so appreciate you watching mm.